All right, well, hello, crime stuffers. Trying to do a video uh, live is silly. Um, I think I, I got cut off, and I went on for quite a bit longer after that before I realized that I was cut off. But all right, um, that's YouTube being YouTube. Um, and mostly, I, I'm, that video yesterday was definitely uh, an exercise for me because I was going over my notes, my copious and voluminous notes. <laughs> um, because I'm getting ready for all kind of fun stuff. I actually typed out a letter that's going to go out to the IRS on Monday, and I got to write a letter to the Pope, and I got to, I got stuff to do. Uh, I got to turn notes right because I've read and read and read, and now it's time to take stuff and turn it into action. So, shall we talk about this kind of stuff, or shall we talk about? Uh, I'll just here. I'll point out a couple of things. Sixth Amendment of the Constitution. Uh, it reads very simply, this constitution and the laws of the United, this is the second paragraph in this, in this, right? So you need to understand one that, um, all treaties and anyway, let's just read this. Um, the constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made pursu in pursuance thereof and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, doesn't say United States of America, shall be the supreme law of the land and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Uh, anything in the Constitution or laws of the state uh, to the contrary notwithstanding. Okay, so, and I like that. Anything, thing is capitalized, right? So anything, and that's obviously uh, in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. All right, so um, all the treaties, the Treaty of Peace, uh, the, the, the treaties that you don't know about, uh, any treaties that have been made are the supreme law of the land. So the Moors are, have discovered, that, right, the Moors, the Hawaiians, a lot of different people have decided, oh, uh, let's read those documents, let's read these treaties we signed. And um, now the uh, United States has to kind of sort of honor their treaties um, because the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And then that leads to hierarchy, the concept that it's the Constitution then it's the federal government, then it's the state governments, then it's the local governments. Simple as that. Um, let's see here. Uh, shall we talk about Hunter Biden? <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh my God, that's finally coming up. Um, see, ain't no good guys in this fight. They've known about this for decades. They've known about this for years. They knew about Hunter Biden for at least a couple of years, at least six months. Um, they knew about Wiener's laptop. And instead of going after satanic pedophiles and people that torture and beat children, um, see, the thing about um, Hunter's laptop is they're letting it out uh, more than uh, because Biden wasn't as far up in the clan or in the hierarchy as HRC because the shit on Wiener's laptop was also enough to make grown men sick. Uh, hardened New York police officers, according to um, many, uh, and many of the people that looked at Wiener's laptop, they're gone. Um, the people that are looking at Hunter's laptop, because Biden is further down on the totem pole, believe it or not, even though he was vice president, Hillary was secretary of state. That's a big damn deal. And she's even more compromised than Biden or Hunter. Uh, well, Hunter Biden or Joe Biden or Joe's brother. Take a look at Joe's brother. How is nobody looking at Joe's brother? The guys, uh, I mean, oh my God, it just goes on and on. Iraq, Serbia, uh, Ukraine. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the list of corruption goes on and on. And it's obviously a crime family because Biden took half his son's money. Right? When I send my son off to work, I don't take half his money. <laughs> uh, and when I do take his money, it's for like, okay, well, uh, you want he wants a new this or that guitar or... or computer or whatever, sometimes I make him chip in, and it makes him feel good about the fact that he earned it, right? And you don't just give them things at this age. They need to they have some some uh, skin in the game, as it were. Okay, some of the stuff that it didn't get uh, read in the last one, but I mean, Hunter Biden, that's like, he was famous for leaving shit behind, uh, because it's when you're rich, right? You leave, you know, that's a sign of wealth. I don't need it, right? So he'd leave expensive shit behind in hotel rooms. And, you know, just get another one. Uh, same thing with laptops and computers and so forth. Apparently, this wasn't the first laptop he left behind. Um, or first item, electronic device he left behind. And he said, fuck it, get a new one, right? He's on crack. He's on meth. He probably forgot that there was stuff on it. Or maybe he didn't forget there was stuff on it. And he was, in fact... Uh, but those of you thinking that he's somehow Team Trump, I mean, please, really? 
Uh, no, he's team self. Uh, these are people that serve self and self only. And um, if he did do it, he did it out of spite, not because he's on t Team Trump, not because he's suddenly turned over a new leaf and uh, decided that he wants to help out the poor sheeple Americans. Um, and just because they were little Chinese girls, he would have done it to little black girls, he would have done it to little white girls, he would have done it to any little girls. The Chinese were just happy to have it on video because now they've got them compromised. And if you, I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg here. I doubt seriously the rest of it will come out um, when it comes to other members of, say, Congress or the Senate or uh, world leaders in parliaments and so forth around the world. Um, these are control files. Uh, they're called control files. Some of the sick fucks enjoy their control files because they enjoy looking over what they've done and seeing themselves star in these bleh, disgusting things. Uh, like I said, um, you guys can't, it's very difficult for us normal people to conceive of how filthy and disgusting these people are. Um, and they are. It's beyond your, uh, most people's ability to grasp. And because literally it's beyond their ability to grasp, they can't grasp it. So their cognitive dissonance kicks in. Um, but if you get them to ask questions and you make them look, uh, and most of them won't look, it's because it, it's Infowars, it's Breitbart, it's uh, anything but what, right? They've been trained not to look at certain news sources, only their news sources. And then their news sources don't cover it, and it's as good as if it didn't happen. However, um, we are, again, uh, for the bajillionth time, moving from Pisces to uh, Aquarius, and... Uh, Bottom line is, uh, dark to light, everything will be exposed. Um, it is no longer the time of Pisces when these people can get away with their secrets. It is, we have moved into, how long it takes us to get into Aquarius um, is up for grabs, according to Raw and others. Uh, so, did I have that here? I, I don't know if that made it into, I, I, I said, I gotta watch that other video again. I watched some of it, and I just realized how early on it got cut off. Um... Again, if you think our experience is unique, it is not. It's as simple as that. Um, this has all been done to, it's just they're using medical tyranny this time. They use the, the right, because they've always used authority to try and get, right? We have the higher authority, you have to listen to the government. Uh, you have to listen to the king, because the king has authority from God, or the emperor, or the party, or the whatever it is. Um, they always get you to uh, appeal to the higher authority, and then they use it against you. Simple. So easy, the easiest game in town. Um, I don't know if this made it. <laughs> you might want to take a look. This this stuff used to be difficult to come by. Now Amazon, free shipping. Uh, order this kind of stuff, and you get on the list, though. Promise. Um, if you don't think they right, this is this is a fun, thin little book of fun rules. I think I read a couple of them. Let's read a couple more just for just for giggles, because they're all short. The lot there's a paragraph of that you know longer paragraph that discusses the law, um, it, it briefly. But overall, the laws are like one or two lines, right? And, and again, you guys are thinking that these guys are all about, uh, you know, demon worship and satanic this and that. And yeah, there's that. But there's also just rules for living that will, if you uh, understand these laws and the, the other people in your club understand these laws, you know that you're going to be able to deal with each other. See, this was the thing with the Mormons. Uh, many other Jews, many other um, religious, usually bound together by religion, um, supposed to be bound together by, um, in this country, by our ideals. But the uh, Mormons, for example, they dealt with other Mormons and they prospered each other. Uh, Jews, they dealt with each other and uh, prospered each other. And then if you were not in their club, if you weren't Jewish, if you weren't Mormon, you didn't get the business. Simple as that. Um, and, you know... You say what you want about it. That, that's how it worked. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of big business in Utah that is big business because the church uh, condones or ordains their, their being business. So uh, the Mormons go to them. And if you're not a Mormon, you don't get that same business. It's as simple as that. Um, now they figured out how to, that's just channeling money. That's just understanding currency. Um, the uh, wealthy have figured out that, uh, yeah, the, that they long since that they can convert and uh, channel currency to themselves and away from the middle class. And the way they did it was with the media. Um, China is a part of this, but it's only a part of this. You can't blame China. It's not the nation states. Right? It's the Manchurians and the people that control the Manchurians. It's the people that are behind them. And what they have planned is a new world order. Um, very simple. Get you guys doing digital Bitcoin. And now, 
How easy is it to turn off? Right? They just turn off your Bitcoin wallet. They just make it so that you, uh, right? So, and further, even if they don't turn it off uh, completely with complete and total control, how easy is it for them to confiscate? If they can take a card and put money on it, they can take that same card and take money off of it. Uh, so they can put money into your accounts and take money out of your accounts. So um, whether you agree or disagree with the proceeding in court before you have a chance to even go fight it, um, they can take uh, extract the penalty from your account. Uh, right? it, it, this stuff shouldn't be hard for you guys. Where we're going should be very clear. Um, that's why I've talked about Bitcoin and how and other uh, digital currency and uh, nah, th um, what is it? The uh, uh, in commerce, it's pretty simple. It's uh, substance for substance. Um, you have no substance there with Bitcoin. Um, silver and gold, I can take a piece of silver and hold it in my hand and uh, nobody else has claim on that. I own it. Right? If it was digital, uh, like in SLV, 10 other people might say they own that uh, silver coin. Maybe more. <laughs> in fact, in the case of gold, it's many times more than that. That's all called hypothecation. Um, but the idea is that uh, you can hold it in your hand and then nobody else owns it. If you have a piece of paper, hi, I have this little receipt that says uh, I own some silver uh, and I'd like to have my silver. And they say, mm, nah, why don't you take some FRNs instead? Um, we'll give you extra FRNs. But... Um, they got out of it in September. I knew they were going to get out of it somehow because uh, I couldn't believe that the whole thing would come tumbling down. And sure enough, the whole thing did not come tumbling down uh, in September. December is the next time w that we're going to have uh, some triple witching and taking advantage of uh, the fact that they don't have the silver. They don't have it. Um, and also, the people that do have it, they're not letting go of their millions of ounces of silver at under 30 bucks, promise. <laughs> That's not happening. So um, the price eventually is going to go up. But in the meantime, people are uh, positioning, sell, positioning themselves to get physical silver. Um, and they can't do it all at once because there's only so much physical silver out there. So they have to slowly but surely um, scoop it into their coffers. They can't because there just isn't enough out there to do it. So while the price remains low and they can take their Federal Reserve notes or other assets, pieces of paper, and trade them for pieces of metal, um, they will. And then one day uh, when they say, <laughs> not when we say, uh, the, the price will begin to spiral upward and get out of control. Um, especially because the silver is one of those strange metals. Um, I had more people asking me about silver at when it was close to, you know, going toward 30, 26, 27, et cetera, uh, than now that it's fallen back down. So the more it goes up, the more people want it. And they always wait. So right now, um, I'm not saying it's an excellent time to buy. The excellent time to buy was when it was in its teens. And the better time than that was when I got most of my silver when it was 5 bucks an ounce. Um, 50 ounces, or excuse me, 10 ounces for 50 bucks shipped to my door. Um, that time is gone. That was like 15 years ago. Um, but there was a time when for fifty dollars you could get ten ounces of silver, um, and all kind of trinkets and all kind of all kind of stuff made out of silver because they were selling it for cheap. There were a lot of times. Um, I don't have it, but I have this little dragon. I bought it for less than what the spot price of silver was, and it was more than an ounce of pure silver, um, because there was a time when you couldn't sell silver. <laughs> it was totally out of favor. That's the time to buy it. Of course, if you were trying to make a quick turnaround, uh, that $5 silver is now only 20 something bucks. That's 400% in 10 years. That's not much of a return. I mean, there's, I mean, that's a great return, make no mistake. But I mean, it's a, there's places where you could have got much better return in markets um, if you knew what you were doing. Anyway, let's read some of these laws just for the giggles of it. The 66 laws. Uh, let's see. Again, available on Amazon. Uh, let's see here. Uh, law 20. Uh, do not seek, wait, wait a second here, now I need a, it's only one sentence, but the light is strange in these glasses. Do not seek, uh, fame, but instead seek to let your light shine. <laughs> this is a, right, does that sound like some kind of Sufi goofy new age thing? Uh, <laughs> And um, fame and fortune shall follow. So do not seek uh, fame. Instead, seek to let your light shine and fame and fortune will follow. Okay, that's law 20. <clears throat> Let's skip ahead. Let's skip over to here to... Uh, let's move up to, I don't know. What is it, 66 laws? How about the last law? Well, actually, you know what? Let's not do that one. You can read that for yourself. 
How about, uh, that was law 20. How about law 35? Why not? Oh, ooh, just for fun. How about law 33? 30, 31, 33. There you go. All right. Um, I don't know what's going on with my vision. It's, it's pretty light in here. Uh, let's see here. Um, my eyes won't focus. Revenge will destroy the light and weaken the family. Revenge, hmm, interesting what about revenge. Revenge should always be uh, avoided, but it, it comes down, oh, should always be avoided when it comes down to it. Um, then every, what? It's only because I can't read. I can't, I literally can't see. My eyes will not focus. Usually, okay, so these are pinhole glasses and usually they help you focus your eyes. But for some reason, um, they're making it so I can't focus. I literally can't focus on the page. Uh, this should be, anyway. Um, comes down to it. Then revenge must be balanced with justice. But in the house of Illuminati, the only revenge is success. So don't seek revenge. What, what does it say in the other book, that Bible book that says all vengeance is mine? Um, how about Law 7? Just for fun. Your best revenge is always success. All right. Um, law 7. Pay your debts. That's the whole law. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> three words. Pay your debts. Anyway, good book to have. Uh, good principles to live by. Um, doesn't make you a Luciferian Satanist to understand some of the codes and secrets they live by. Um, also might give you an understanding. Know, right? Um, what did Sun Tzu tell you? Know yourself, right? Know your enemy, um, and you never lose. If you only know yourself, you win some of the time. If you only, there's, I'm butchering the quote, but you guys would know it. Um, or hopefully you know Sun Tzu. Um, but anyway, if you only know yourself, you're not going to win every battle. If you only know your enemy, you're not going to win every battle. If you know yourself and your enemy, that's when you win the battles. So, um, uh, and one of the proverbs is, you know, you study all things and you take what's good, right? Um, the problem, like in Lord of the Rings with Saruman, uh, or Saruman, is that he studied the enemy to the point where he was seduced by the enemy and became like them and did the evil things. That is the danger. But you need to understand who your enemy is, how they think, and what they do. And um, you guys, or well, I don't know about you guys, but many people just want to think that uh, these are just evil people who should be dismissed and destroyed. <sighs> they have been deceived, for sure, but um, their, prin their principles. And you'll notice that a lot of the people that are in the Illuminati, these are not the poor people. These are not, these are not the lower class. This is not the... Uh, and these are not the slaves. These are the people that own slaves. These are the people that these are the torturers, not the torturees. <clears throat> All right. Uh, crap. There's so much to cover. I don't even. I mean, uh, like I said, I went on for quite a while uh, before, and uh, I'm just going to cover a couple of these PDFs, and we'll call it a day. Um, I posted them in my other link or in my other uh, video. Uh, that was live that got cut off. This will not get cut off because I'm recording it and I'm going to upload it the slow, old-fashioned way. All right, so let's see here. Uh, this document made some excellent points. See, I can read there, but I couldn't focus on the book. I don't know what the hell. Anyway, um, this document makes getting old. Simple as that. Um, next thing i got to work on after I get this lung thing handled is eyes. Uh, anyway. This document makes some excellent points that may be that may go unnoticed. Uh, in my reading of this document, the writer has properly identified anything of substance value as gold. Right? Everything else is credit. Right? <laughs> gold is the only money. Everything else is credit. Um, let's skip over that. Skip over that. Skip over that. Let's talk about the author. Will mention color of law. Color of law has a very specific meaning that may be found in a law dictionary, as well as many cases already decided. There it is, stare decisis, many cases already decided. Here's a definition taken from a law dictionary. Color of law, the appearance or semblance without substance of legal right, right? 
Misuse of power possessed by virtue of state law and made possible only because the wrongdoer is clothed with authority of state uh, is action taken under color of state law. All right. Uh, they also, the author also speaks codes and copyrighted codes. This is your, another clue that are, are the codes for your state copyrighted? Well, I guess they are. That makes them uh, specific or special law. Uh, let's see here. There you go. The author notes that the codes are copyrighted because they are corporate, making them private code, which also makes them a copyrighted code. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. There is a reference to charging a paper fiction. This one is a little more involved to explain, but if you will bear with me, perhaps I can make it clear. Uh, when government creates a birth certificate, it is registered with the Department of Vital Statistics or some similar government agency. The name may vary from state to state. Like um, in Chicago, in Illinois, it is, what does this birth certificate say? I have one over here. I have a, I have a couple of them here. Uh, let's see here. What does it say? It says uh, certification, certification of birth record, and this one is certification of vital records. And one comes from the county clerk, and the other one comes from the division of vital records. All right. So I got birth certificates on file in the state I was born uh, with the county clerk and with uh, the state. Uh, Bureau of Vitals Records, which most people call Vital Statistics. Uh, let's see here. The Department of Vital Statistics issues a second birth certificate with the name of the baby spelled in all capital letters, creating the fictional entity. That's who you got to kill. That's who you got to get rid of. And that's what you got to understand. The Patriot community calls this the straw man and has been calling it the straw man for some years now. They don't recognize a straw man. You talk about a straw man in court, they don't understand what straw man means. You need to use the term ins legis, E-N-S-L-E-G-I-S, -E ins legis. Look it up. Um, that's the, you got to speak the language of the dead when you deal with the dead. Um, and that's that, that, that thing you call the straw man, this legal fiction, that fictional entity um, that uh, was created by your infant upon birth. Okay, more recently, this fiction has been referred to as a trade name. It's true. They use it as a trade name, and they claim ownership of that trade name, since you haven't. Um, and they also claim power of attorney for that trade name, so you need to revoke that. Um, and you also might let, them, might let them know that the infant actually isn't dead in the state and trust they've created. Uh, thanks very much, but I'm uh, claiming all that stuff back because it was created for me, and I am that infant, and it turns out I'm not dead. Uh, <laughs> It sounds ridiculous, but um, there are so many documents you can find that talk about uh, sending uh, the IRS uh, information or basically uh, asking them or not asking them, telling them to uh, change your account from uh, decedent to non-decedent. Decedent is the default, by the way, non-decedent. And then if you want to get clever about it and you know what you're talking about, MFR01, which is not required to make or file a tax return. Um, let us continue. Uh, the paper fiction in which they operate is the government, right? It's a creation of man's mind, right? They change you to the sky. It's all in your mind. All of this is in your mind, right? It's all when you get your mind's thoughts, you put them on paper, and then they have to know it's you. So you have to have a signature or some way to make a unique mark on the page or unique thing on the page so that they know it's you. And then they have to be able to verify that um, it's you because anybody can do anything and they do now as you <laughs> as you found um, it's unbelievable what people will do um, I mean stealing houses using paperwork stealing I mean uh, geez it's just it's, it's amazing um, not everybody stands on the square not everybody lives by those principles not everybody does the right thing when offered or when given the opportunity to do the right thing and I feel bad because my 15 year old is figuring that out we ordered a computer and uh, it was a total scam um, we get the money back like Wednesday because we have buyer protection because I'm not that stupid. But at the same time, uh, see, I uh, I would have checked to see the person uh, that was selling it had good feedback and uh, buyer, right? But my little boy just trusting, right? And it's and it's so hard to watch your children deal with the reality that is reality. You know, deal deal with the fact that um they're not not everybody um will do the right thing not everybody um is honest in their dealings not any not all right anyway you get it okay so uh let's see here what i got here we're gonna what i'm reading um 
Okay, let's talk about the Federal Reserve notes. Okay, the author also refers to Federal Reserve, Reserve notes as non-negotiable. This takes uh, also takes some explaining, but hang in there. Uh, and anyway, this, I like the way this is written, so folksy. Um, upon the deposit, uh, upon the deposit with the Treasurer of the United States, not the United States of America, and also the Treasurer of the United States, not the United States Treasury, uh, any direct obligation of the United States. Oh wait, well, let's read this from the beginning. Upon deposit with the Treasurer of the United States, A, any direct obligation of the United States, B, any notes, drafts, bills, exchange, no, bills of exchange, or banker's acceptances, you should know what a bill of exchange is, and a banker acceptance, acquired under the provisions of this act, um, that any Federal Reserve Bank making such deposits in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury, not the Treasury Secretary, <laughs> shall be uh, entitled to receive from the comptroller of the currency circulating notes in blank, duly registered, or countersigned. Or, all right, A is public debt, B is private debt. And so any direct obligation of the U United States, that would be public debt. Uh, any notes, drafts, bills, exchange, bankers' acceptances acquired under the provisions of this act that any Federal Reserve Bank making such deposits in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled. Okay, that's private debt. So you should look up for, uh, what is it, uh, 12 U.S.C. 411 when it comes to redeeming for lawful money. As you can see, the Federal Reserve notes are issued upon the acquisition of debt. Therefore, Federal Reserve notes are debt currency. They pay us in debt. This shouldn't be new to any of you. Um, ask yourself a simple question. Can you discharge a debt with a debt? If you properly conclude that you cannot, then you quickly realize that you never truly own anything. Um, can you discharge the debt uh, for the house that you live in with more debt? Can you buy a car with debt? Can you? <laughs> yes, you can, and you do. Um, and they call your debt credit. See, that's the thing. They name things many different things, right? It's not a road. It's a, uh, it's a trade route. Um, they call you persons and individuals and corporations and all these other different things, and you think that all means man or woman. It's not synonymous, and these things have uh, meaning. Uh, there, and then there's lists and lists using the many names concept. Um, but yeah, they try to tell you that your fiat currency, uh, that, that currency is money. It's not, or that it's, you know, that, you, that it's the same as gold and silver. And many people believe that it's the same. In fact, many people believe it's better than gold and silver because you can fold it up and put it in your pocket and it doesn't weigh a lot. Uh, <laughs> anyway, where's the gold? Author unknown. It's in our hands, but what, we did, we, what did we do with it? I don't think I'm gonna read this whole thing because it's kind of long, but uh, I'm going to read quite a bit of it. Uh, the gold or substance value is the only thing that can be lawfully exchanged for human energy. It's an interesting, it's an interesting concept. Um, you can read this on your own and talk about this with your you and yours, um, which is the source of all wealth. That's gold on earth. It comes out of the hands of minds of men and women. Remember, only human effort can bring forth gold from the earth, drill for oil, cultivate and harvest the crop. All money, all wealth comes from the earth. Right? That's all. Everything else is derivative thereof. Uh, and I mean, it doesn't matter. Computer chips start off as earth, right? silicon, or other uh, rare earth minerals and so forth. Um, everything, everything comes from the earth. Uh, and if you don't understand that simple concept, you can't eat anything that doesn't come from the earth. Uh, even, quote unquote, synthetic food, still, eventually you get back to the earth. Um, government fictions, which exist only as ideas expressed on paper doc and on a paper document, cannot create any wealth. That's the thing. Governments can't create wealth. They can only take it from somebody else and give it to you. Um, they also can't give you any rights, right? So they can't take away any rights. Um, when you are charged with a crime, government attorneys create uh, the charge on the paper and see you are the discharge. You are the ground. You are the thing that. Um, that can discharge these charges that they make up using their statutes. <sighs> uh, let's see here. On paper, without consideration from anyone uh, that is a real human being, they create the charge, charge through color of law by announcing a violation of one of their copyrighted codes. If these copyrighted codes, uh, oh wait, if these copyrighted codes are only for the use of the bar carded crown attorneys, and by the way, let's talk about the crown and the Vatican. Um, 
as I have done more research, and that's the letter I'm writing today. I'm writing, uh, let, let them know, you don't own my soul. I've already, uh, soul is, is uh, owned by Christ um, and me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oops, I wrote, I, I've already erased it. But anyway, it, this said 1493 and 1495. Uh, those were papal bulls wherein the Pope uh, says, hey, I own everything. Um, but you can also go back and look at uh, Boniface the Eighth, and in 1300s, all the papal bulls that talk about them owning your souls and everything. Okay, the Pope owns um, the crown. Um, go look at who the crown is. Okay, the crown owns the United States. <laughs> <laughs> right? These are all private corporations that we all thought were nation states um, operating. I mean, they're very tricky about it, and unwinding it is very interesting. But um, if you spend some time, it starts to make sense. Um, but it's very simple. Uh, they trick you into thinking that they operate on the land. When they do, they operate in the public. But they are private entities, private corporations, um, and it all roads lead back to Rome. All of them. Um, so the Vatican says they own the crown, the crown says they own the United States, the United States, right, anyway, all right, um, and wait a minute, I gave them the, again, it's just United States, but United States Corporation is a corporation, go take a look at that, um, and then United States Corporation owns all these other corporations, and anyway, it's a bunch of corporate entities that, uh, basically extract wealth from us peons. Okay, uh, let's see. These copyrighted codes are for the use of bar carded crown attorneys and not available to us for our defense. Uh, then there is obviously no equity under the law. And you should read some equity maxims. And I've gone over quite a few of those, right? Uh, laws of equity and so forth. In order to be allowed a defense in their courts, they require you to hire one of their bar carded crown attorneys to represent you, not defend you. They, right, a public defender, that again, they call that, right? There's a, there's a name, the public defender, um, but he doesn't defend you, he represents you, and he works for the state. Um, so is he there to try and get you off, as it were? <laughs> naughty, naughty. But is he there to try and uh, make it so that you pay nothing, or is he there to make sure that, you, that he smooths and greases the wheels to make it easy for you to, uh, uh, to pay your penalties, and so on, and make you think that you you got defended against whatever uh, bullshit they came up with to try and extract wealth from you. Um, what we miss here is the carefully or orchestrated charade, charade, uh, in this, wait a minute. What we miss here in this carefully orchestrated charade is that government attorneys operate in paper fiction and must charge a paper fiction, like with like, right? You cannot bring two things together. Uh, so you have to have a paper fiction. They cannot act on the person. They cannot act on, see, there you go. Yes, they can act on the person. Um, person is not the same thing as man or woman. Person is the thing that they created when they created your birth certificate and made you believe that what they charged was us when indeed it was a paper facsimile of us. Right? They get to volunteer, they get us to volunteer by letting us believe the deception and essentially volunteer to gift our gold unto them. Upon very careful examination, we see that they have to trick us into giving it to them. They cannot just take it, right? Again, that's the, the, how Lucifer works, how the Satan works, is that they have to give you free will, but they use your free will against you to trick you into using your free will to get you to do all manner of things. Anyway. Therefore, if government has ended up with the substance of our productivity, we did it to ourselves. We volunteered, right? Uh, so yeah, this, this guy said, if you're sitting in a cage, um, you, you it doesn't look like it, and you don't feel like it, but um, you basically volunteered to sit in that cage. If you gave them money, um, uh, basically they tricked you into giving them money. Um, because you don't know how to stand in your square and you don't know how to defend yourself. And believe me, I know they make it as difficult as possible. And um, yeah, there, but again, there's paperwork to be done. When we labor, we create the wealth, right? That's it. They, they, they suck the juice off of us, right? You know, so many ways. Um, because they don't labor, we do, right? Um, they aren't writing tickets. The, uh, we are writing tickets on ourselves. They aren't police officers. Uh, we are. They aren't uh, judges for the most part. We are. They aren't um, certainly not going to soil themselves in the business of governance. So they aren't representatives of senators. Uh, we are. 
um, they don't write the codes, they tell us to write the codes, and then we enforce the codes on each other and right, extract wealth. You never see these guys that are outside the corporations, that own the corporations. Also, understand the very simple concept uh, that they basically uh, put the corporation into debt. Uh, United States Corporation is the one I'm talking about. And then uh, once the corporation goes bankrupt, and it is in 1933, it's very clear, um, and that was some of the stuff I was reading that I don't think made it into the video, um, but, oh, wait a minute, let me get that, I wrote that down. It's here in my notes. Uh, but that was, uh, 17 March, 1933, uh, uh, that's the bankruptcy of the United States, uh, chapter 11. That happened in 17 March, 1933, and you can look it up in the Congressional Record, volume 33, H1303, um, the Emergency Banking Act uh, of Mar 9 March 1933, uh, 48, Statute 1, Public Law 89-719, that is House Joint Resolution 192 that all the patriots and all these other people talk about. Um, you should have read that and looked that over, and basically it says, federal government's been dissolved, uh, it's bankrupt, so who's taking over? The owners of that corporation, the lenders, the people that lent them and the money and uh, bankrupted them, um, now basically own the corporation, and the corporation's assets were us. And now everything that um, the United States Corporation claimed to own uh, is for sale. Uh, bridges and roads and ports and everything's for sale, right? Uh, including us. <laughs> But they don't sell us like they used to, like put us in cages or put us in boxes and ship us off. Um, they sell our labor. They sell our, uh, you know, our bonds. They sell the companies. They sell the... Anyway. All right. So where am I at here? Uh, let's start over the beginning. When we, uh, when we labor, we create the wealth. We do it with... What we do with it af afterwards is the problem. Our first mistake is taking a check from one of the private commercial paper, or uh, a f one form of c private commercial paper, right? That's what you get, you get checks, right? Um, re very rarely do you get paid in cash, as it were. And it's not cash, it's pieces of paper. Cash is, cold hard cash is silver and gold, right? Um, the uh, silver and gold has been long since taken out of our everyday usage. Um, and you use pieces of paper or checks. In fact, some people prefer a check because uh, there are so many laws about uh, you know writing scams on check. Like I left a checkbook on my uh, dashboard one day, uh, and I came back in a very busy place that was well known for criminality, and uh, the checkbook was still there, <laughs> right? Because uh, most criminals understand that you screw around with checks and you get in trouble. Anyway. Our first mistake is taking a check, one form of private commercial paper, as the exchange for our labor, right? You're supposed to be paid in gold or silver, uh, mostly gold. Uh, at this point, we shall have a remedy. Oh, right. At this point, we still have a remedy. Or we shall have one, but anyway. At this point, we still have a remedy. That is to get cash, right? Uh, 12 USC 411, uh, non-negotiable Federal Reserve notes, and exchange them for the goods and services that we need to sustain our lives. Or you can exchange them for gold and silver at a very horrible rate right now. You need like a thousand, <laughs> wait a minute, more than that. You need 19, I don't even know what this price of gold is right now. Let's go look here, hold on a fast one. But you need like 1,900 of the uh, little pieces of paper to get one ounce of gold now. Used to be 35 little pieces of paper. Now you need, uh, let's look here, you need $1,901.70. And if you want an ounce of silver, you need $24.16. Uh, all right, so let's see. I need to go back to what I was reading. Oh gosh, there's a long PDF here that I'm never gonna get through because I wanna do that in addition to this. I'm on page three of 19, by the way. Um, so you can read this for yourself, but I just wanna go over because we it brings up many different points. Okay, but see, at this point, we still have remedy. Absolutely, you have remedy. They always have to give you remedy. Equity says they got to give you remedy. They just don't have to tell you what it is or how to claim it, um, or what you know the process is to get the remedy. So, um, but most of the time, we take our paycheck to the commercial bank of our choice, right? Because you're given choice any bank you want, as long as it's a Federal Reserve Bank. <laughs> They're all Federal Reserve banks. 
with various uh, little perks that you might get. Maybe you got a toaster when you opened it up. Uh, might have this uh, 55 thing at my event now where I get all kind of free stuff in addition to, uh, which they could have given me when I wasn't 55, obviously. But um, because I've been at that bank for quite a while and because I know my banker and because, anyway, I got all kind of perks at my bank. And also it's good to have a relationship with your banker because when I'm on the phone, uh, this voice, they know it's me. Um, I mean, all the tellers recognize my voice, including the head teller and including the branch manager. So uh, that came in very handy when I was in Mexico, actually. Okay. But anyway, we take the, that paycheck to the commercial bank of our choice. Uh, where we deposit it into an account that belongs to the bank. Read your read the agreements that you signed, and all the and you don't see. There's just stuff that you signed, and there's this whole other bunch of stuff that you didn't sign. Um, that's called adhesion that you didn't know that you were signing at the time. Um, but everybody else has a bank account, so of course you do. Uh, and and I can guarantee you, a bank account makes life easier than not having a bank account. Um, and that's how they get you. I'll bet that when you opened your bank account, uh, that you intended to open a private account. That's not what you got. Uh, when you got your checks in the mail, they probably had your name in all capital letters, uh, and that all capital letters name, uh, which when spoken sounds in them so and as, uh, sounds exactly the same thing uh, as the name that you thought you, that you were. Um, so at this point, you believe that it is you, um, right? That name on the bank account? No, you are authorized to represent that name, but that name certainly isn't you. And on top of that, um, you are not that name, right? So when you go into court and they ask you what your name is, you say, I am, and then state your Christian name or whatever name it is, and that you represent um, the name that they have called. Um, and then you better tell them that you're there especially, not generally. Uh, and then you better know what the hell you're doing and speak as little as possible. You shouldn't be in the, in the first place because they're there to trick and trap you using your own free will to get you to, to, <laughs> to, to extract money from you. And they're good at it. Um, everything seems to be working out fine until some agency decides to raid the account. You, complain, you can complain bitterly, but it all falls on deaf ears. So what happens? Like when the IRS sent a notice, see, I have no money in my accounts. But the IRS uh, sent a notice of... Uh, Fortunately, at the time, I was, I think I, I have overdraft and my account was zero and my overdraft was like 25 bucks or something like that. So when they sent and tried to get some money out of my account, there was no money to get. Uh, anyway, um, when the agency of the federal government decides that it's your turn to be the victim, they are actually justified in taking funds from their account because technically you think it's your account, but actually it's their account. Right? Go look at the agreement. Uh, you have no defense because each week uh, you made a gift to the bank by putting your deposits in there, and you've actually increased through um, federal fractional reserve banking uh, the federal debt every time you do that. Um, you become more and more of a debtor, uh, not less and less of a debtor, the more FRNs you have. I explained this to one of my wealthy friends, and uh, after at first he just like, yeah, you're out of your mind. And then being wealthy and intelligent, he didn't get all that money because he's a dumbass. Uh, he went and did some research and just went, oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, um, again, get him asking questions, right? I didn't, I just said, well, then how come, right? Go look at your account and how come they can, anyway, ask them some very simple questions. And this is a guy that used the financial system to enrich himself very well. I mean, he's a very comfortable man. Um, when you filled out your application for your bank account, you essentially begged them to set up this gift account uh, with, with some contractual obligations that you may or may not be aware of for you so that you could have a place to deposit your gift, right? <laughs> your gold, I like the way this is written. Again, anonymous, I don't know who wrote this. Um, you are presumed to be uh, competent to contract at all times, right? On the face of it, you have no complaints. Anyone can volunteer to make a gift, even the government, especially to the government. Um, you can make a gift to the government, especially to the government. They love it when you give them gifts. Um, when you give them money that they don't, <laughs> that you can't, they can't prove they owe, that you owe it, but you give it to them anyway, because you're afraid of their guns and clubs. Um, I stopped giving them gifts in 2001. Uh, a gift is not an exchange for consideration, but it is an outright gift. Right? So you don't get any, you, technically you don't get anything but ideas back. Um, when you complain that you did not intend to open an account for someone else, they will tell you that you did it freely. You're the one that gave the social security number, even though the social security card says not to be used for identification uh, on the application. 
Uh, that's your dead man's trust. That's your bank. That's your routing number. That's your anyway. Uh, probably want to figure out how to take control of that number. Uh, banks are only public entities that have uh, public accounts. You are presumed. See, presumed. They make assumptions. You are assumpted. Um, you are presumed to be competent to deal in commerce and know the difference. Right? Ignorance is no excuse. Right? You thought you had a private account. Uh, turns out it's not a private account. Uh, turns out that uh, those deposits are not yours. Those deposits are theirs. Those deposits are even insured. Um, but uh, once you put it in the bank, the bank doesn't have to give it to you if they don't want to. And people are finding that out the hard way in other countries. And so far, um, we haven't had it happen much here, but it's coming. In, uh, those are called bail-ins. In the courtroom, they charge the person fiction and then demand your human energy to pay for the charge that they created on paper. The whole charade is to acquire your human energy without exchanging something else of value for it. Now, this is why it is so important to know who you are and to grasp our relationship to the court and corporate state. Your only proper relation to the defendant person is that of agent, right? Authorized representative, agent, etc. Uh, proxy is another thing, right? You are the proxy for that uh, all caps name. You are the agent for that all caps name. Uh, but that all caps name is not you. That is a person that they created. That is a fiction on a piece of paper. Uh, you may handle your affairs as they relate to person as agent only and discharge to, uh, wait a minute. You may handle your affairs as they relate to person as agent only and discharge to balance the account and discharge to balance the account uh, in the only form of funds that they can deal with, debt instruments. That would be Federal Reserve notes, right? Uh, the courts only deal in debt instruments. You can't go down there with gold and silver and pay. Um, and your bank, you can't deposit gold and silver into your bank. You can only deposit checks, a debt instrument, you can paper. That's it. They've turned the world into the world of paper. Uh, so you need to understand this paper uh, better than you do now. And it takes a little study. This is your chance to pay in like kind. Uh, you, and, and only in sujuris, standing, and if you, S-U-I-J-U-R-I-S, -I -I only in sujuris, standing, which may be reacquired at uh, elocution, there's a good word, E-L-O-C-U-T-I-O-N, may now offer to settle the accounting for, for full settlement and closure with prejudice. You may now give them an IRS Form W-9 request for taxpayer inf identification number. That's a W-9-T-I-N. Um, for funds paid to the court for the case. Demand a full accounting upon presentment of an invoice or bill from them uh, that you will pay in like kind. As agent for the fiction. The fiction and its number was created by them to access your straw man in legis uh, credit and all charges are to be paid in like kind. Credit. You discharge the obligation using your payment bonds um, that you don't know you have. You discharge the obligation by authorizing them to use your straw man's credit when you accept their offer and write, upon, and write on their bill paid to the United States Treasury. Then add your Treasury Direct SSN number, your signature as agent, and the date. Along with this, you may give them a 1040V voucher form, their copy B of the IRS form 1099 OID. Now this is going to start getting you into some trouble if you don't know what the hell you're doing. There have been people uh, that have gotten into serious trouble using 1099 OID. Um, original issued discount uh, is what uh, OID stands for. And the form 1099A, acquisition or abandonment of secured property. Okay, so the, that's the uh, thing Patrick Vine talks about, ABCs and so on. Um, you better know what the hell you're doing when it comes to this stuff. Um, to claim the municipal bonds and Miller Act bonds, uh, gotta go look up the Miller Act, um, just like it sounds, the abandoned funds drawn on person's name, in all caps, um, treasury direct account number, blah, 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 right? Whatever your treasury, do you have a treasury direct account? Yeah, I, I do now. I, I never did before this. Um, Okay, upon closer examination, we now discover that we can ask for the invoice bill for full settlement and closure with prejudice before the courtroom theatrics, and therefore, by offering to pay all up front, they have no commercial energy with which to bring action into court since you have offered to settle. 
this may be the most important offer of your life. Um, you know how to make, they, they, right? Most people don't know how to make uh, settlement offers. Uh, reality check. Uh, the only purpose of any government is to defend the people establishing it, right? Whoever defended, whoever made the government, that's the only purpose. Well, they are, aren't they, um, defending themselves. Uh, the legal de facto government was established by the attorneys, and they are acting to protect themselves. The method they use is trickery via perjury of oath and presumption of contract. Therefore, you must presume. <laughs> I can speak English. Um, and uh, what was that? The method they use uh, is trickery via perjury of oath. We'll get to that in a second. And presumption of contract. So you have to rebut their presumptions. You have to show them that uh, you are a man and a woman, that you aren't the same, that you anyway. Um, and uh, you should have done that long before you ever stepped in the courtroom. So you have a paper trail and you have others that acknowledge the fact and you have your little passport card and passport that shows that you're on the green list. And, and okay, well, you don't have that when you walk into court. They're going to make a whole bunch of assumptions about the fact that they can extract wealth from you um, and that it's their right to do so. Also, perjury of oath is uh, the fact that uh, that's why you ask for their oath of office because you want to stand on that document called the Constitution uh, that you are not a party to, but they are. They have oaths of office. Therefore, they have to respect your inalienable rights and treaties. That's why I started off with uh, Article 6 of the Constitution. But you should read the other articles of that Constitution and your Bill of Rights. Uh, let's see here. Is that enough for one video? Because <laughs> I got more. I got way more tabs than that open. Um... Here is the structure of the birth certificate. Let's read about this just a little bit. Uh, a certificate is a paper establishing an ownership claim. Barron's Dictionary. Simple. Uh, let's see here. Reg uh, registration of birth began in 1915. Before that, see, my mother, my grandmother had, was not, did not have a birth registration. Um, we have documents that show that she was born in 1909 uh, because we have family Bibles. But... Um, if you go down to the Vital Statistics Bureau, uh, there is no document for my grandmother there because uh, they didn't re do re birth registration until six years after she was born. And uh, certainly, actually, probably later than that, because the state she was in, I don't think they started that until the 30s. Um, anyway, but by the Bureau of Census, with all states adopting the practice of birth registration by 1933. See, so um, there was a time. See, we take it for granted. But now, almost 100 years later, we've forgotten the day when you took care of this yourself. You gave all this over to the state, and now they've taken that document and converted it into this whole other things, uh, or whole other thing that you may or may not understand. Birth and marriage certificates are a form of securities called warehouse receipts. The items included on a warehouse receipt are described at Section 7202 of the Uniform Commercial Code. Um, the law which governs commercial paper and transactions, which is parallel, which is parallel a birth or marriage certificate. All right. So the location of the warehouse where the goods are stored, uh, that would be a residence, uh, the date of the issue of the receipt, uh, that's be date issued, consecutive number of the receipt uh, found on the back or front of the certificate, usually in red numbers, uh, generally red numbers at the bottom of the birth certificate. Um, that's also the case number that they used to uh, pledge you and tell you tell the United States Bankruptcy Court that you were chattel property for the uh, United States Corporation or for United States Corporation, full faith and credit of United States Corporation, and they've got this certificate to prove it. That's your birth certificate that was created when uh, shortly after you were born. Um, they wouldn't have a certificate if you weren't born. Uh, without one, uh, the infant, there is not the other. Um, but that doesn't make you the same as that paper fiction. Um, in fact, I have no evidence that, uh, and I've never, I've asked numerous times for evidence, and I have no evidence that myself, uh, the living flesh and blood, is the same as the driver's license or the passport or, 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 or. Okay, uh, let's see here. So this talks about birth and marriage certificates and gives you definitions for the warehouse receipt. Um, a warehouse receipt, is, which is considered a document of title, hmm, may be a negotiable instrument and is often used for financing with inventory as a security. We are the security. They take out bonds on us every month. We are that uh, negotiable instrument. Well, we aren't the straw man, the in legis, the piece of paper, the legal fiction in all caps. That name, that trade name, look it up, see, right? 
uh, if I try to make it a theme, uh, many different names, calling it the same thing, uh, trade name, uh, negotiable instrument, a where uh, right the warehouse receipt they don't use it right um, that you think of it as the baby that's on the thing on the document you think of it as you you think of it as a living man or woman no 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 that's a piece of paper that is a legal fiction that they created um, that they can uh, use for financing um, or as security or as surety all right since the U.S. went bankrupt in 1933 and I just read it to you again. Um, all new money has to be borrowed into existence. All states started issuing serial numbered certifi cert certificated warehouse receipts for births and marriages in order to pledge us as collateral against the loans and municipal bonds. Um, I've never had a marriage certificate, so I don't know about that, but I know a lot of people that have talked about uh, taking uh, and doing with their marriage certificate the same as they did with their birth certificate. Uh, let's see here, but we are the full faith and credit of the American, uh, uh, well, of the United States Corporation. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's time for me to quit here shortly anyway. Um, so the government needed an efficient, uh, methodical system of tracking its property to that end, and they are look upon us as human resources. Your corporation has a human resource uh, department. There is a human... Uh, yeah, here, uh, I wrote it down. Uh, Executive Order 13037 on human capital. Go look that up. That's you they're talking about. All right, here's another one. Uh, Federal Children. This one is actually has an author, Joyce Rosenwald. I don't know who she is. Um, see, and that's right. Who is she? What's her? Uh, what, what I was taught is um, who is the author? Um, do they have an agenda? Of course they have an agenda. Um, is the agenda, you know... Where is she coming from, is the idea. And um, how accurate is her information? Um, anyway, but she wrote all this whole thing, which is uh, many, many pages long. Uh, well, actually, not many pages long, three or four pages long. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but let's just talk about it shortly. In 1921, the Federal Shepherd Towner Maternity Act created the birth registration, or what we now know as the birth certificate. So here it is. Here's the origin of this whole thing. Shepherd Towner Maternity Act. Um, I'll put the link below. All right, so now you can look that up. That's in 1921, and basically this is how the birth registration thing started, and it has snowballed into this whole bureaucracy that they have learned to use to, to your detriment and uh, their credit. Uh, it was known as the Maternity Act and was sold to the American people as a law that would reduce maternal and infant mortality, protect the health of mothers and infants, and for other purposes, like, you know, enslaving you. <laughs> without your knowledge. Um, but yeah, we won't talk about that. Uh, one of the other purposes provided for the establishment of the Federal Bureau designed to uh, designed to cooperate with state agencies in the overseeing of its operations and expenditures. That's it. It doesn't have... Uh, what it really did was create a federal birth registry which exists to this day, creating federal children. This government, under the doctrine of uh, parents patre now legislates for American children as if they are owned by the federal government. Through the public school enrollment process and continuing licensing requirements or license requirements for most aspects of daily life, these children go up to be adults indoctrinated into the process of asking for permission from big daddy government to do all those things necessary to carry out daily activities that exists in what's called a free country, right? So you're asking permission to pursue your life, liberty, and happiness. Uh, before 1921, the records of births and names of children were entered into family Bibles. Like I said, my mother, my, or not my mother, but my, well, actually my mother, I believe, is in a family Bible somewhere that I don't have. I um, believe it's on the mainland someplace with the, the other members of the family. My uncle had three children and there was only me, so they got the family. Anyway, uh, it's a long story, but the long story short is, um, yeah, uh, our family used to keep track of who was born, who got married in a family Bible. Um, not with a certificate como esse, like this, right? on, a, on, on bond paper. But you're not bonded. They just put you on bond paper. And then... Uh, if you can look yourself up and see that, yeah, you're you're uh, traded. Um, and any case you have in court has been turned into a bond and trades. Uh, let's see here. Should I go over the most of this? The, in 1933, bankruptcy was declared by President Roosevelt, the governors of the then 48 states, because you got to remember, Alaska and Hawaii weren't part of the deal back in 1933. 
um, pledge the full faith and credit of their states. What was the full faith and credit of their states? What did they have to pledge? Uh, including the citizenry as collateral for loans of credit from the Federal Reserve System, the Federal Reserve bankers. Now, the Federal Reserve, uh, those are the people that own us. So, to wit, the full faith and credit of clause of the Constitution in Article 4, Section 1, requires that foreign judgment be given to such faith and credit as it had by law or usage of the state of its origin. All right. Um, the foreign statutes are to have force and effect to which they are entitled in the home state, and that a judgment or record shall have the same faith, credit, conclusive effect, and oblig obligatory force in other states as it as it has by law or usage in the state from whence it was taken. Okay. Uh, basically, what they're saying is, uh, yeah, they, they, you are the full faith and credit. Every state. Uh, ponies up us <laughs> to the Federal Reserve. Um, you can read this yourself. It goes on for days and days. And it, like I said, it talks about the fact that we are the human resources with a new crop of human resources born every single year. In 1923, a suit was brought against the federal officials charged with the administration of the Maturity Act who were citizens of another state to enjoin them from enforcing it, wherein the plaintiff averred that the act was unconstitutional and that its purpose was to induce states to yield sovereign rights reserved to them by the federal constitution's 10th amendment. Uh, you might want to look over the 10th amendment, um, and you want to be a 10th, quote unquote, 10th amendment citizen and not granted to the federal government. And that the burden of the appropriations falls unequally, unequally upon the several states. Right? And that's the thing. All this is supposed to be uh, apportioned equally, right? Um, including taxes. Uh, anyway, Anyway, held that as the statute does not require the plaintiff to do or yield anything, uh, and as no burden is imposed by it other than that of taxation, which falls not to the state, but to her inhabitants, uh, who, right, notice how they personify the state, right? I'm calling her her, not its. Um, the state, but on her inhabitants, who are within the federal as well as the state taxing power. The, com the complaint resolves down to the naked contention that Congress is has usurped reserved powers of the state by the mere enactment of the statute, though nothing has been or is to be done under it without their consent. And this is, you can read it, Commonwealth of Massachusetts versus Mellon, Secretary of the Treasury et al. And it's a long site. Um, so the act is unconstitutional. Hmm. It purports to vest in agencies of the federal government powers which are almost wholly un, uh, undefined it matter, in matters relating to maternity and infancy and to authorize appropriations of federal funds for the purpose of the act. Many examples may be given and were stated in the debates on the bill in Congress of regulations which may be imposed under the act. The forced registration of pregnancy, governmental prenatal examination of expectant mothers, restrictions on the right of a woman to secure the services of a midwife or a physician of her own selection are measures to which the people of the states which accept its provisions may be subjected. There is nothing which prohibits the payment of subsidies out of the federal appropriations. Right? There is nothing which prohibits the payment of subsidies out of federal appropriations. Insurance of mothers may be made compulsory. The teaching of birth control and physical inspection of persons about to marry may be required. These are all in caps. Um, anyway, go take a look at this. Uh, all the rights that have been given up under this birth control, or excuse me, birth registration, um, birth, it is birth control, but technically it's, it's uh, what's the word I want? It's uh, them taking control of the births. Uh, and monetizing and making money from it and from our ignorance. Shall I read the end of this? No, I'll let you read the end of this. Anyway, um, I'll put the link below. And let's see here. And then I'm going to put... This is a nice article that you should probably read. Seek, but you may not find. Non-UCC recorded, unrecording the hidden security interests under Article 9 of the Uniform Commercial Code. Um, I'll put a link to that. This, this is way too long. It's 43 pages, and it's kind of dense. Uh, let's see here. But it covers nice, 
niceties and things that you might want to think about and talk about. Uh, let's see here. Then there's also this document that goes on for days and days. And this document is uh, bankrupt corporate so-called governments. Uh, another, another one by Sovereignty International. Um, and it basically just goes over, I mean, start, talks about the Magna Carta and the city of London and, you know, history, you got to know your history. And the crown, who the crown is, who is the crown? Wait, I should read that. War of 1812, the crown. The crown is a corporation that is domiciled in the city of London. The crown is owned and operated by the Vatican. The crown that belongs to the queen has ER transposed over it, stands for Elizabeth Regina. All members of the bar are foreign agents of the crown. And they have come to the United States to implement martial law through that bar. Uh, let's see here. Um, how much more do I need to put in here? Uh, like I said, this thing's already gone pretty long, so I think we'll stop here. But uh, I'll put this in there also, uh, just covering over it. Uh, bar members have facilitated the imposition of martial law rule. Bar members have facilitated, uh, and you know, it is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9th. Did I just read this? <laughs> anyway, uh, so here it is again. Um, it is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, 48, Stat 1, Public Law, 89-719, uh, declared by President Roosevelt, being bankrupt and insolvent, HJR, that's the House Joint Resolution 192, 73rd Congress in session, June 5, 1933. Joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. Uh, and that comes from the United States Congressional Record of March 17, 1993, Volume 33. Um, that was Jim Trafficant. Okay, that, that said this out loud, and that's why they did such things to traffic him and finally got rid of him. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think we'll call this a day. And uh, educate self and educate others. This is the bottom line. Um, this one talks about Unidroit also, the, U, uh, the Unidroit Droit Treaty. And again, um, going back to Article 6, the treaties are in force, right? Um, Unidroit covers mandatory insurance for motor vehicles and anything related to marriage, divorce, and children. Uh, anyway, you might want to, this is a long, what is it, 133 slides, and some of them are pretty thick. You might want to take a look at this. All right, uh, this will be loaded up on my uh, website, and I will be putting it on uh, YouTube here eventually. Amazingly enough, I still have a channel. And, uh, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, e pluribus unum, monkeys. Um, share the information, share the knowledge, educate self, then educate others. Uh, we get through this smelling like roses, I'm telling you. We come out the other side, great, but um, it's going to be a little bumpy in between time, I think. But uh, less bumpy if you're well-educated and prepared.